Today, I'm here with Gregory Vahanian, and he has been one of the most, um, you know, a vibrant and warm presences in my Master Heart Business Mentoring community. And um, everyone who gets to know him loves him, um, and you'll see why. Uh, Gregory, let me just, first of all, welcome you. And um, I'd love for you to introduce yourself as, as we practiced a lot in, in the Master Heart group, all of us introducing ourselves, but uh, go ahead, please. Sure, thank you, George. I'm Gregory Vahanian, and I'm a transformational life coach, and I help uh, men and women embrace a more healing and empowering orientation to life that maximizes success and fulfillment in every area of life. Beautiful. And you have been bringing this online in the past couple of months. And so the first question I have for you, and this is for those who uh, are watching, you know, kind of following along this series called Progress and Learning or Progress Interviews, where, um, you know, I think, I think they're going to take from this some encouragement to, uh, to, you know, grow their, grow their presence online, especially in, in their business. So, um, yeah, the, you know, before the last couple of months, I mean, you weren't creating content for for one is that right like like tell tell me about the, the the journey of your your growth in the past few months for for creating sure and I, i'd like to frame that it wasn't that i wasn't creating content because i was but not with with the rhythm fluency or abundance and also with a sort of a different mindset. My, my heart and my consciousness is always about service. Um, and what I have found is in the recent years, I also design and, and facilitate workshops for men and women, a signature workshop of mine being uh, Embracing Authentic Masculinity, which is a men's uh, support group series. And I found that when I'm offering a workshop, I would create content, for example, for people who missed one of the evenings, I don't want them to miss the whole theme. So I'd create a video that would be available to them if they, if they missed. So, and then on occasion, I would just be inspired and say, you know what, this is really good. I wanna share this with someone, but it was very sporadic. It, and, and it really was more about an intention, of course, to serve, but also uh, in like full transparency with an idea, with my sort of naivete and immaturity around marketing, with an idea uh, of hoping for a conversion. And, and that never felt totally clean, even though the content is valuable, and even though my intention is to serve, there was a part of me that, in all honesty, often frequently had attachment to the outcome. And, and I was, even though the content stands alone as valuable, and I got very positive feedback, I came to a point inside myself where I thought, I'm not comfortable with the different marketing strategies that I see. And I saw you showing up. I looked up authentic marketing and I, sh I saw you demonstrating really my highest values and highest and best practices that were aligned for me al along the lines of the consistency, the generosity of spirit. And even though I hadn't heard it from you yet, uh, I sensed there's no attachment. This is coming from serving from overflow. And, and as I learned, the criteria for success, which I, which I really love and is con congruent with my values, the criteria for success is not about conversion. The criteria for success is not about even what the external response is. The, the primary criteria su su of success is, Am I growing my own consciousness and am I uh, refining my ability to articulate the themes that are relevant and, Im and important to me that are meaningful? And then trusting that if it's meaningful and transformative and healing for me, perhaps it'll be valuable to, to the audience. Yeah, <laughs> so beautifully said. And 
Oh man, yeah. What a what a shift that is, isn't it? Um, and it makes the world of a difference to uh, the energy that the audience senses from you, um, and it it makes a huge world of a difference to, I guess, the sustainability or the continued sense of fulfillment in in what we share out there. Um, while, of course, we also practice, um, you know, strategic or wise distribution of the content so that it actually touches more people, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But um, so as you have been um, making videos, in fact, consistently over the past couple months, are there any lessons you want to share from that? Is there any, uh, um, you know, kind of growth you have noticed uh, within yourself. Thank you, George. Lots of growth. And here's the irony. In all the time that I previously have done videos, again, the quality of the videos, I've looked at them and, and the feedback was great and I feel really good. But in all that time, it never specifically translated in terms of business. Even though I was more thinking along the hopes of that <laughs> yes with within two weeks of moving into a consciousness which is aligned mm. with how i show up when i'm working with clients and and um dissolving the illusion that marketing is different than the, the consciousness i bring to my marketing needs to be mm. some business mindset that's different than the consciousness that I bring to my actual service as a transformational life coach. When I moved inside myself to, this is just part of my ministry. It's, it's marketing as ministry. It's how, can I, how can I serve folks? And the same way I serve folks in my, in my sessions, ironically, within two weeks of my doing three videos a week, just having fun, just checking in, you know, what's what's a tender place inside where what's authentically something I'm navigating, including being clueless about what I'm going to share. And, and then I went, oh, my first video was on the subject of, I have no idea, but I'm going to, I'm going to do a video. And then I went, ah, the unknown moving into the divine unknown and, and the, the opportunity for communion and being held in the deep waters where there is a spiritual support available in that. Un so as I, within two weeks of, of starting to share content, not even advertised content, just simply posting without boosting, um, someone reached out to me who said, hey, Gregory, um, this, theme really moves me. I want to talk to you. And two days later, she became a client that I've been working with the last couple of months. That's good. Yeah. That, that, that's one thing. Yeah. I just, it's kind of ironic because that wasn't the point of my posting. Right. And, and yet uh, she's a very uh, highly aligned client in terms of yes. her consciousness and the yes, work. Yes. Be beyond that, I think I've done I was thinking about it, knowing we were going to be meeting today. I've done somewhere between somewhere 38 to 50 videos wow. in the last two, three months. Amazing. And, and several articles as well. And yes. several of, and many of the, the videos I will transcribe as, as articles and adapt. Yes, yes. Um, it's so fun to just be emptying out what's what's present and it feels like I'm, i also have an acting background i had an acting teacher who used to say when someone came in with an attitude or a, a particular take on what's going on in the scene she would often interrupt and ask people to empty out and she would say she would say just take a moment and let out an ah uh, let it all out and then start and she would say, you have to be empty in order to be full, which I understood to be like, you have to empty yourself of any preconceptions in order to be available to inspiration and spirit. And so I don't know why this moves me so much, but it moves me. But every Monday, I don't know exactly what I'm going to talk about, but I do my three videos. I empty, I empty out 
And then I find I keep getting um, like renewed. It mm. gets replenished. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's the, there's this very nourishing experience of yes. while I'm refining and discovering my capacity to articulate specific themes that seem meaningful, uh, healing and empowering. Simultaneously, I, I'm growing that ability, and I, I'm being nourished and replenished with new inspiration. And so I'm just really grateful. Wow. You've just described the, to me the, the, the essence or maybe even the, the, the pinnacle of, of creativity, uh, which is creativity as a, as a personal growth practice, a spiritual practice. Mm. Um, and you've described beautifully what I've always, I've, what I too have experienced that there is an infinite well within us and most people don't know it and so unfortunately most people kind of are are they haven't broken out of the i don't know you could say it's it's some kind of shell that was um put up put you know they were put into by upraising by society by no you, you can't do that or um you know hey don't speak until you're you're spoken to or whatever it may be now as adults we get to uh you know, reparent re ourselves not that our parents weren't, weren't good but it's like we get to train ourselves to do what exactly what you say or we give ourselves the opportunity we have to give ourselves the permission the opportunity and the discipline um, because just like any practice, I mean, the way that you said it sounds so natural. Well, I show up every Monday. <laughs> no, not everyone can do that. Um, it's like, oh, I show up every Monday, even though I'm not sure what I'm going to say. That's the hard part. So how do you, and for those who are listening and wondering, well, yeah, I'd love to also be consistently uh, creating or in front of my audience. Hopefully at this point in the conversation, people have been reminded again of the value of showing up and creating even uh, without the attachment to some some marketing outcome oh it must some some you know i must get this many likes or i must get this these inquiries as a result but showing up as a spiritual practice as a creativity practice so how have you been able to find that discipline or to develop that consistency, like any any kind of insight or encouragement there for that. Sure, I was speaking to someone yesterday, and they made a they coined a phrase that just came to them that seems appropriate. They were talking about me as I was actually talking about this process, and also other practices that I do for my own spiritual nourishment. And the phrase that popped into his head that he shared, and we both giggled, was he said, S "Seems that you're a glutton for nourishment." <laughs> that's a good one yes that's yeah. a good thing to be glad <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> for, and, uh, for deep you know kind of spiritual nourishment yeah, yes totally. yes and so and so for me there are certain things like i i would redefine as i often do when i'm working with folks and, and who are navigating territory around discipline the same i i I say it because it's my own experience that I used to hold discipline as something like with a stick, uh, you know, this discipline and there's going to be punishment or repercussions if you don't. And over the years, probably the last 20 years or so, what I've come to embrace is the connection between discipline and discipleship. And the notion that discipline is to be disciplined means to be a disciple of whatever it is one is committed to. So if I'm really a student, if I'm a devotee of my own unfolding consciousness, I'm pretty ruthless in, in, in a good way about, you know, I'm going to stay the course. And there are certain things, if they're aligned with my highest values and the sharing, um, of, of, of my innate gifts and what I'm called to share, then 
I feel like there are certain things that are, there are intentions, there are commitments, and then there are what I would call inviolate agreements. It means this is, this is not a casual thing. This is not a well-meaning intention. This is not a maybe if. Everything gets scheduled around this. This is going to happen one way or another um, because, because that's what I'm here for. And so um, one of the things that I'm really grateful for, and, and I, I imagine you can see I'm moved and, and, and filled by it. One yeah. of the things that I'm- I'm, so I'm moved <laughs> based, on, based on what is touching you and what's, what's pouring forth here. Well, one of the things that I'm so grateful with that connects to all of this is your model, George, of the three stages. Mm. Because the thing you were describing before that seems to undermine, at least in my own experience and my perception working with folks, a lot of people's process is those early life experiences where we get into conditioned uh, storytelling about a right way to do something and a wrong way to do something. And the last thing in the world any of us wanna feel is the pain or the shame associated with unresolved bumping into owies of feeling like we did something wrong. Like, why would I create? Why would I document, as you put it? Why, why would I share anything authentically if I risk not being received? But, but what, I, what I have found is, um, that you you created, observed, and then codify, uh, codified, and now share with us this beautiful model, which is an iterative model of stage one. Is it okay to do a quick? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Sta stage one being approached very casually, yeah. light touch, not a mm -hmm. lot of time and energy put into the preparation, whatever is personal, resonant, and authentic to one's own experience. And just, you know, looking at it almost as if it's a public journaling, even, where it's just, I want to, I want to, I want to have a record of this observation of something that happened over the weekend, where I had an insight that I know was valuable to me, and maybe it'll be valuable to someone else, but that's not the point. The point is, let me anchor this as a way of being sure that I'm both anchoring it now and that in the weeks to come, I'll still be able to harvest yes. the, the, the richness of mm. what this is. And if, it's as, and if it feels as nourishing to me as it does, I need to just trust there's got to be at least one other person yeah. out there who, who it's going to resonate with. So that, that stage one with a light touch It, it gets past our ego defense, which might procrastinate or delay out of its doing its job to preserve status quo, keeping us in our comfort zone and staying out of the danger of having some idealized self-concept challenged that we weren't man enough or strong enough or together enough, capable enough to do something worthwhile or or you know valuable so that stage one with the light touch is to me ingenious and on a personal level that in and of itself if that was the only thing that i got working with you it would have been worthwhile because it because yeah. it, it that it, that created an invitation to just show up on a regular basis and That's have right. fun and know yeah. you know what it it doesn't even have to not only does it not have to be perfect it doesn't even have to be good it just has <laughs> right. to be it just has to be authentic yeah <clears throat> it, it needs to be it needs to be honoring the moment and yeah. kind of your uh your state in in the moment and um, I'm actually, for example, I'm really glad that my, a lot of my stage one stuff has, is still out there. Of course, people, if they want to delete stage one things, they can, it's okay. But um, I, I think it is, a, it is a historical record of our development. And I, I, the way that you said it also reminds me of this idea. I think we both have this kind of belief that 
the internet can be a community. I mean, like, like the world, the world is now connected so easily and quickly through content that we post online. And just like you said, if even if there's one person, and in fact, there's not just one person, there's likely to be tens of thousands of people yeah. who, if they only experienced the moments with you, they'd be like, you put words to what I've been thinking about, or you showed up in a way that I really needed today. And that's not possible unless we are willing to have the faith, the trust that say, hey, I don't know if anyone's going to find this helpful, but I'm putting this out. I'm sending out a signal. <laughs> I'm sending out a signal in case it's going to connect with you know, my fellow soul group members out there they're out there and the internet makes it so easy now and and you know if so connect reach out i'm here i'm here for you i'm here for us you know and yeah. um and yeah <laughs> so i i'm just so looking forward to seeing um that, that you know you develop that soul tribe uh that soul Thanks. community that's going to happen with um and, and as everyone can can hear and witness you here, you, you show up with your heart and that is irreplaceable. It's, it's, it's not, I mean, knowledge and words in a certain sequence. Yeah. I mean, anybody can, can, can do that, right? Knowledge has become, it's become a commodity. It's not, it's not that somehow someone is smarter than, no, no, it's not about knowledge anymore. It's about presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that in authenticity that still is surprisingly rare <laughs> online may, and so may I, I gently jump in for yeah, just a please, second please. Uh, par pardon me i just what you're saying i think is so beautiful and it, it's another of the benefits that i've experienced as my progress as a in my own it's um authentic branding and the and the the ongoing <clears throat> refinement and clarifying an appreciation in truth of my own, to use an expression I heard originally from you, my own energy signature. That all of us, each of us, you know, I, I've talked about it for, for 20 years or so in terms of um, uh, one's innate gifts or natural gifts. And, I, and I've thought of presence, of course, but you use this expression, energy signature. And, and that's it. It's like, how, how is it that we sit down with someone or we cross paths with someone and in an instant, we recognize whatever that frequency is of the energy that they embody and, and trans and radiate. And so I'm, I'm so appreciative that the context of both what you model, and it's funny, earlier today, we had a meeting in one of our master heart groups and one of the things I referenced, you just mentioned a moment ago, which is the, the signal that's being transmitted. And I said to the person I was partnered with, how much I appreciate the clarity and authenticity of the signature uh, uh, um, signal that you transmit, which makes, makes it very clear for folks like me and this beautiful community who all have their own particular backgrounds, their own consciousness. At the same time, with all the uniqueness of everyone's signature, there is this resonant uh, shared sense of leading from the heart. Uh, and, and as you model uh, consistently, serving generously from overflow and also being very clean about when we're selling and that selling isn't a bad word selling which sometimes very highly sensitive service minded people can can have discomfort around um it's just a matter of if selling is serving yeah then let's serve transparently right. and be very clear yes. now now i'm now i'm sending a clear signal yes. now i'm generously serving in Inviting. this way with no and yeah. now i'm letting you know this is a this is a course or a program right. which has a fee 
And if it's something that you're interested in and available, I want you to know this is how you can do it. And it's, it's all just so clean. Yeah, and it's a partnership too. It's like when people have connected with your energy signature, they are open to invitation and to partnership. Um, speaking of which, I, uh, as we close out this conversation, sure. I want to I give you an opportunity to share um, what the work that you do with people. And I think people who are listening here, um, some are no doubt connecting with your energy signature. And those who are you know, listening, you might want to invite Gregory to your podcast, to you know, interview uh, Gregory on a you know, YouTube channel or whatever, or might want to work with him, you know, personally. So share with us, um, what are the kind of, well, yeah, what, share with us your service. What is it that you love to offer to people who are listening? Sure. Well, uh, keeping it lasered, I feel like, uh, first of all, I just feel so privileged just being, when, when someone comes to me, it's usually at a time when they're aware that something is just not as fulfilling something is just not as purposeful there's some area where they're not thriving either in relationship or productivity or their spirit spiritual life there's something uh perhaps in marriage I, i'm happily married for 20 plus years and congratulations um, thank yeah. you thank Beautiful you family and thank you and um so uh, there are there are different there are different ways I just feel privileged to hold space for folks. And what I experience is a very sacred uh, opportunity to have a front row seat in terms of what is most meaningful and treasured uh, and purposeful in their hearts. And then to support folks, whether it's individually or I work with people individually, as couples, uh, as, as well as a group, group dynamic, Whatever the context is, I would say the common thread in my work is holding space to support folks in dropping below the ego level, the mental and emotional level, which can be filled with shoulds and ought tos and shouldn't and all kinds of conditioning um, buildup of stuff that there, there's at least some measure of disconnect from a, a, a place of deep inner knowing that in my experience resides in the depth of one's heart. So uh, I hold space to invite people to actually be able to hear their own deepest wisdom and, uh, and to begin to use discernment and self-referencing rather than strategic outward focused and mental strategizing. It's a, it's a very self-honoring mm -hmm. And at the same time, taking into account not only one's own highest good, but the highest good of all concerned. It's beautiful. And, and I'd say some of your clients, I'm sure, have experienced that in their life in some way, and you help them to reconnect to that yes. again. Yes. That may have been lost along the way, but it's like, yeah. it's like those of us who have experienced it know that that is where the real power is. That is where the real fulfillment is in life. The real power, the real creativity, the real connectedness. It's like that's where the good stuff is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm grateful that you are available, yet you're there to help others reconnect to that because that's that's everything. So thank thank you. Yeah. Uh, last quick laser thing. It's also similar in a way <clears throat> to what I see you doing with the the all of us in master in the master heart community, which is whether somebody has been in for two months or two years or five years, it's an iterative process. So yeah. even if someone is deeply connected, mm -hmm. there's still another level yeah. of initiation yes. and ushering forward yes. into that greater awakening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the beauty, I, the beauty and, and the awesomeness, I think of reality of consciousness is that it is, yeah, like you said, it's an iterative process of growth that it, there's just layer after layer after layer. I mean, I don't think any of us are even touching what's possible even. I mean, mm -hmm. but, but certainly um, what, what you help people do is to, to find the depth that the deepness and the richness mm -hmm. and the power there. 
And so thank you for that, for that thank work. Thank you, George. Um, so yeah, uh, those of you who are listening, you, you know, please check out the links um, in the notes below. And Gregory, um, you could just say it uh, for those who you want to just type it real quick. What's the, what's the website? Sure. Uh, GregoryVahanian.com is my website. And, and online, if you're on Facebook, feel free to check out. I've got lots of videos on uh, Gregory yeah. Vahanian coaching on Facebook. So Gregory is just spelled like, like usual, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y. And then Vahanian is spelled V-A-H-A-N-I-A-N, V-A-H-A-N-I-A-N. <laughs> so Gregory, thank you. Thank you for um, this conversation. And thank you for all uh, the, the generosity and the wisdom that you bring every time I experience you. So, Thank you, George. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. So appreciate you. Thank you.